So we're going to talk a little bit about ionic compounds and dissociation. All right, so if you are, if you have a look at this this diagram that I've drawn here, this diagram represents a uh, ionic compound when it's in solid form. Okay, so as you can see, this 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 compound is kind of in a bit of a lattice shape. Okay, we call this a lattice. Okay, it's kind of a regular. In this case, it's it's a grid, a three-dimensional grid, but we call this kind of regular pattern of a uh, of different ions a lattice okay so now let's pretend uh, the red the red ions here are positive and the, uh, the yellow ions are negative okay as you can see I've drawn these white lines between every uh, between every every pair of ions so between every pair of adjacent ions if say we've got a negative ion here and a positive ion here there's a line okay now, firstly, that kind of shows the the lattice shape. Okay, it sort of serves to show that we've sort of we've got a cube here, we've got a cube here, and they're kind of joined, and it's it's forming this lattice shape. Okay, but, but as well as this, the, these white lines are basically symbolic, or they represent an ionic bond. Okay, now an ionic bond is basically a, a bond that forms between ions, as you can probably guess, um, and it's a result of their opposing charge. So obviously. Because we've got you know this red positive ion here, okay, and it's connected to this this yellow negative ion, okay. So we've got this red positive ion and this yellow negative ion, and they're connected in this lattice in this lattice structure. But this white line represents an ionic bond, sorry, not a compound, an ionic bond. That was a bit bit of a mix up there. Okay, an ionic bond, okay, and that's basically just a result of their opposing charge, okay, just like any sort of any sort of setup relating to electricity, we've got a positive charge and a negative charge, and we know that they attract each other, and so because we've got a positive ion and, an, and a negative ion, they're going to attract each other because of their, their opposing charge, and they're going to form an ionic bond, okay, so that's that's a key part of, of an ionic compound in the solid form, okay, and so because we have this, this even pattern, um, it allows it sort of allows the cancellation of charges. So the lattice is set up in such a way that uh, all the charges cancel each other out of the, from the ions. All the ionic charges cancel each other out and, and can sort of bond in such a way that it's it's pretty stable. Okay, and so as we can see here, we have three negative. We have six, a total of six negative ions, a set of six yellow ions, and a total of six red ions. Okay, so we can see that this is a one to one ratio between red and yellow. Okay, we've got one, two, one. A one to one ratio between the ions, okay? And so that means if we call the positive ion A, or A plus, and we call the yellow ion B minus, okay, the, uh, we're gonna we're gonna create a, a formula for this ionic compound, okay? Now the way we represent ionic compounds via chemical formula is an empirical formula, okay? And, a, and an empirical formula is basically the ratio between the two ions in, the, in, this, uh, in this compound, okay? Obviously, if we've got this, this, this lattice structure that may extend, you know, as far as possible in any direction, you know, we don't know how big this, this chunk of, of the compound is. So it may extend quite far in this direction or this direction or whatever, okay? So we don't know that, we're never going to know the total number of positive and negative ions in there. Okay, so that for the best way to show this is via, or the only way really, to show the, uh, the chemical formula, the chemical makeup of an ionic compound, is via an empirical formula. Okay, and so this is basically combines the ratio between the ions with with the uh, with what the ions are themselves. Okay, so we've got an empirical formula. Okay, in this case we know it's a one-to-one -one ratio. We know that the constituent ions are A and B. So the, uh, the empirical formula is just going to be A, B. Okay. We don't include the charges in this empirical formula because they cancel out, and as a whole, this, this compound, A, B, or this structure, has no net charge. Okay. So we, we don't need to include the, the singular charges of each of the ions in this empirical formula. We just, we just include what sort of ions they are, you know, what, what elements they are derived from. So we have A, B, and it's in solid form. Okay, so an empirical formula is just the ratio between the ions in an ionic compound. Okay, and so that's how we that's how we represent an ionic compound as a chemical formula. Now, when we put the ionic compound, if we put a solid ionic compound in water, 
We drop it in this glass here, full of water. And what we see is something called dissociation. Okay, so we've got it written up here, dissociation. Okay, so what happens, assuming this, this compound is soluble, and we'll go into solubility in another video, but assuming this, this ionic compound is soluble, then what happens when we drop it in here is that rather than maintain, rather than staying in this lattice, you know, rigid structure where all the ions are bonded together in sort of a grid or a really particular pattern so as to, to be stable and to cancel out charges, what we see is that all the all the ions that form the compound just just float around. Okay, they're, they're, they're in this rigid structure. You know, they're playing by the rules. And then once they get in the water, they just they all just go for a swim. You know, they all just go for a bit of a play, and they can do whatever they want. Okay, so what we see is this: we just see everything moving around by itself. Okay, and so when we dissolve uh, when we dissolve an ion compound in water, for example, you know, when we if we shake a bit of salt into a, into a glass of water for for some reason, you know, this is what's happening. Okay. We've got, we're shaking this solid ionic compound into a glass of water, and the ionic compound is undergoing dissociation. Okay, so dissociation, and the ionic comp the, the ions in the compound are separating and floating around by themselves. Okay, they're no longer in this this sort of this sort of state. They're no longer bonded together. Okay, and for this reason, for this reason, if we have a compound, for example, we're using AB here. If we have a compound AB. Okay, and we drop it in, if we have a compound AB and it's in solution, so if we write AB, like it's AQ, okay, it means we've got a solution of this compound AB. Okay, but in reality, what this is, is just an A ion floating around and a B ion floating around. Okay, so whereas, you know, the, the, the full sort of chemical formula for the ionic compound when it's in water is AB aqueous. In reality, what we have is we have an a, a positive A ion or a cat ion. Okay, and the negative B ion or an anion. Okay, if you want to remember sort of the... Um, the, the way we, we name these, these ions and the signs, okay, remember that a cat ion is a positive ion because cats are happy. Okay, it's a bit silly, but that's the way I do it. Okay, cats are happy, and therefore cat ions are positive. You know? right, so we've got to be a happy cat there. It's a bit, a little bit dodgy. So we've got this this cation and this anion. Okay, and so when we dropping this ionic compound in solution, we see that rather than having, you know, this ionic compound in solution, if we want to really look at what what actual state this ionic compound is in, if we want to look closely. Then we can rewrite this as an A cation in, in solution and a B anion in solution. Okay. Whereas up here we can't do that because the, the fact is we have this rigid structure, and so we don't have ions by themselves. Every ion in this solid ion compound is bonded to other ions which carry opposite charge. Okay. And so we can't do this. We can't write it write an ionic compound in this way when it's in the solid state. Okay. We can only do it when it's in the aqueous state. So when it's in aqueous state, you know, the A compound dissolves and the ions all float around by themselves. Okay. So now, for, as an example, we're going to we're going to do we're going to write an equation for the dissociation of, of sodium chloride, of solid sodium chloride in water. Okay. So what we're going to do is pretty pretty quite a quite a straightforward equation. Okay. So say we we are starting out with sodium chloride in its solid state. Okay. That's the only reactant in a dissociation equation. Okay, we've got sodium chloride in solid state. Okay, and what's happening when we're dissociating is so dissoci so if we're saying talking about the dissociation of sodium chloride solid in water, it's basically saying we start off with a solid block of sodium chloride, we drop it in the water, and then you know what what happens to the sodium chloride after that. Okay, so we start out with solid sodium chloride. Okay, then we drop it in water, and so you could kind of write here, you could say. You could write H2O. Okay, you, you don't technically need to, but it is a good way to show what's happening. Okay, so we're, we've got solid sodium chloride and we're adding water to it, but water is not a reactant. You know, water isn't being produced or used up in this equation. It's just sort of, they just, it's just being added. In. It's now just, it's now present with the sodium chloride. Okay, and so therefore, by adding wet water, the water doesn't react, but what it does do is it means that the sodium chloride dissociates. Okay, it's a key word dissociates into its constituent ions. So now we have sodium ion and 
chloride. Okay, so that's that's all you have to do if you want to write an equation for dissociation. Okay, we could start out with you know could start out with liquid or, or gaseous sodium chloride if you wanted, but here we've started with solid, okay? And by adding water, the water hasn't reacted with it, that's why we put it above the arrow. And by adding water, the sodium chloride compound has just separated itself into its, its two different ions, okay? So that's what dissociation is all about.